Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are playing some more historic here on Magic Arena. And we are going to already revisit a deck that we played not that long ago. We're going to add some new cards. We're going to add a whole nother color to the deck. And we're going to have a lot of fun with this deck again because I've been having a ton of fun playing the other version um, in ranked as well as non-ranked. And we've just been killing it. And I said, you know what? Let's just let's keep adding more cards that involve um, what this deck really revolves around. And let's see if we can just have even more fun with it. So uh, as always, before we hop into today's deck, just want to remind everybody, if you enjoy the channel, the video, anything, if you enjoy it, Please like, comment, subscribe, check out all the cool links down below, join the Discord, and again, anything you can do to interact with the channel for free, it helps out the channel immensely, so thank you all in advance. And with the flavor of me saying thank you to everybody, we're going to hop right into today's deck, and we are playing, and this is going to be a ridiculous title, it is going to be called Two Valky, Thanks for Everything, Nicol Bolas. So uh, again, since we're playing a deck that is revolving around taking our opponent's cards, um, we want to say thank you in a great way to our opponent for letting us borrow their cards to essentially put them out of the game with it. So yes, this is another deck where we get to steal their cards, play their cards, and just have a lot of fun. So that's what we're going to be doing. And again, this, this deck's going to be very similar to our last build with a few slight changes. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more control centric just so we can get to the higher end game stuff. But again, there are going to be some new cards in this deck. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus from going left to right. Um, we're not really going to focus on anything um, specific, you know, no blocks of anything. We're just going to go left to right. We're just going to hit on all the cards. So we have four copies of Thought Seize. Again, Thought Seize is a great one drop. It's going to allow us to discard any card out of our opponent's hand that is not a land. And this is going to allow us to actually hit some of our uh, better cards, better payoffs later on, and it's going to help protect some of our creatures. So four copies of Thoughtseize, two copies of Legion's End, because again, I'm still playing a lot, a lot, a lot of aggro decks, and this really helps stifle those aggro decks, get rid of, you know, we can get rid of multiple goblins if they share a name. Um, this gets rid of a lot of the, the life gain. I'm, I'm playing a ton of the mono white life gain decks, so if if they play a couple of um, soul wardens or the uh, the little one one life linking make angel guy, um, this in multiples this gets rid of anything in in play as well as in their hand. So great removals. Uh, Valky, well we're playing a two you know two Valky, so we still have to continue to play Valky. But one of the cool things now is not only in this version, not only are we going to be stealing creatures out of their hand and potentially morphing Valky into those creatures, we are also going to be able to actually cast to bulk because again, we want to be playing as many cards from our opponent as possible. So, <clears throat> so we have added red mana to the mix so we can cast Valky. So, or to bolt, I mean. So this should be a lot of fun. Next, we have You Find Some Prisoners. Um, this card is great. This is just like Siphon Insight. So we're going to kind of cover both these cards at the same time. Um, you find some prisoners. It's got uh, two different abilities. One ability, we, you get to destroy an artifact. We don't really necessarily care about that. Maybe it'll come into play, maybe it won't, but we don't really care about that ability. We care about the interrogate them ability. Exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card and you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast it. So this is great for multiple reasons. So this is not only it's actually going to permanently exile three cards from our opponent's deck. So that's cool in itself. This actually, um, the other cards that we're doing don't actually do that. Those extra cards that we don't see, they typically get put back on the bottom of their library or they go in the graveyard, but this actually just exiles the cards that we don't choose. So really, really cool. We can hit land because it allows us to play the card as opposed to casting it like some of the other cards as well. And this is not a permanent ability where we get to just forever have that card kind of off to the side, but we do essentially have two turns because if we play it during our turn, we have that turn that we played it on, and then we have our next turn to play this card because it does say until our next turn. So, and on top of it is an instant, so maybe we just do it at the end of their turn. Maybe we're, this is another great way just to hit land. Maybe we're land light, need to do that. So, um, again, really cool card. We're we're just trying to play our opponent's deck, so this is gonna just give us three good looks. 
Siphon Insight, the exact same thing. Um, it's only two mana as well, but this has flashback. So again, we get to cast this twice, get a look at four cards. We are playing one copy of Ashiok. Um, you know, and really when I thought about playing this, it it's a very cheap Planeswalker. It prevents our opponent from searching. It, uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of graveyard decks, so I really want to see if we can just get rid of those graveyard matchups completely by playing this. Um, and again, like I said, it, it, it puts a target on itself. So this can potentially just take a little bit of damage off, a little bit of heat off of us while we play this. And you, you really never know when your opponent just accidentally, um, you know, shame scoops because they tried to search their library for something and, you know, Ashok prevents that. Now, Thief of Sanity, again, love Thief of Sanity. We're wanting to cast our opponent's cards. We we attack with it, with this 2-2 flyer. We hit them, we look at three cards. We pick one, exile it, and then the other two go to the graveyard. The uh, only caveat with this is it has to be a non-land, uh, it has to be a non-land card because we can't play land with it. So we have to make sure that we're actually hitting our opponent's spells. Unmoored Ego, this is, this is a card that we just decided on, right? Uh, this card can just destroy uh, a, a car, uh, a, an opponent's deck. You never know when your opponent... because Well, let me, let me start off real quick and say this card is a card that a lot of people just forget exists sometimes. So you might just turn three Unmoored Ego and maybe you're playing against a blue-white control deck and maybe there are only win conditions to Fairy. You just name Teferi if you see Blue White. And that in itself just might be backbreaking. Maybe you name Shark Typhoon again. I, I know I'm just using Blue White uh, as a as an example. But there are a ton of decks out there that has a, that have a specific uh win condition. And you know, maybe this just you know gets us there. Maybe our opponent is playing the nine lives combo and Maybe they drop a Solemnity on turn three, and then our play back at them is Unmorty going and naming nine lives uh, to prevent you know us from being locked out from never taking damage. So uh, just a thought. We did add a little bit more removal, uh, mass removal, in the form of Extinction Event. So we are able to choose Odd or Even, uh, able to destroy all those creatures. This is kind of a um, you know a last minute. We need to make sure that we're not dying. And I didn't want to play Languish. I really almost played Languish over this, but I felt like the option to choose Otter Even might actually come into play. So we're actually going to give this a shot. We're playing three Gontis. Again, want to look at as many cards. So four cards per every time we do this. Still, still, still great. Still playing Henny's Expertise. Again, three, th uh, four mana to be able to do th minus three, minus three to everything. And then also on top of that, being able to follow that up with a, a spell for three mana or less for free. And the cool thing is you can put a creature into play and that creature will not die because those creatures have already gotten money. Worth, worth uh, taking a look at. Still a couple copies of Hostage Taker, just two of them. We can uh, steal artifacts or creatures and recast them and they become ours. So again, in that theme where... We are trying to play our opponent's cards, and it being a pirate is very flavor flavorful because pirates are always trying to steal our opponent's cards. And last but not least, we have two hitters here. One is one copy of Xanathar because I only had one copy of Xanathar, and it is a mythic, and it's super expensive, so I don't think that we want to be playing a bunch of copies of this. So six mana, five, six. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose your opponent. Until end of turn, that player can't cast spells. So this is going to turn them off of counter spells and removal during your turn. And then you get to play with the top of their deck during your turn. So you can just chain together a whole bunch of spells. And yeah, this card is the ultimate card. This is the face of what we're wanting to do. So yes, Xanathar, please, 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 please come into play while we're playing. And last but not least, the other namesake to the deck, two Valky, thanks for everything. Nickel Bolas, the God Pharaoh. Uh, for the plus two, that's really all we care about. We want to be able to exile their cards from the top of their library and play cards for free. So our Planeswalker to kill at seven loyalty coming into play immediately is probably going to tick up to nine. And yeah, um, we're going to be doing all kinds of crazy fun shenanigans. Um, yeah, so that's the deck. I really hope you enjoy this deck again. Um, we're going to hop into the games. I hope you enjoy the title because once I actually, uh, the title popped in my head, I was like, yes, we are naming the deck that. So. Yeah, with that being said, um, let's hop into the games. We'll talk to you guys uh, all throughout.
All right, we're gonna. We just had to revisit this this type of deck because I'm having so much fun playing. Um, <clears throat> again, just to reiterate what I went over in my in the intro, I'm having so much fun playing this like siphon insight type of deck that um, yeah, I just had to I just had to come up with an, another version of it. Playing your opponent's decks or playing your opponent's cards. Um, and just punishing for them for punishing them for for doing that just uh just seems really fun so let's uh let's see what we're starting off with oh so this is a mill deck huh hopefully we can hopefully we can hit this teferi's tutelage on this siphon it does look like we will be able to Oh, okay. Beautiful. So, unfortunately, gotta go here. The fairy's tutelage. I know you have one in your hand. Going to be a constant source of milling that we do not want them to have access to. All right, well, must be nice. We're going to force them to use um, one of these cards. Okay. Seems quite fine. We're gonna keep it coming, right? They could tap it and make us mill too. Not really super concerned with that. Tap tap. All right. Well, let's see what sweet mill cars we uh, we can play. Oh. We only have one choice here, so it's definitely gonna be ruin crap. Right, well. Getting all the hits, right? This these mill us, right? So whenever it deals damage to us, it mills us. If I were to do this, it would just get immediately killed. But caveat to that is, I'm thinking, my friend, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and do this. I, I think it's safer. Honestly, would not mind. Oh, so they're just... They're just playing a whole bunch of rogues. All right. Uh, do it to it. That was a kind of an unfortunate turn of events. We are down to 18 cards. One has all land. Just do this now. I don't think we have any actual island right now. You know what we do? Mill them back. Ooh, that was a chunk of cards. That was a chunk of cards. So we're going to go ahead and do this because this actually exile th exiles three cards. Um, 
Yep, and we're going to shock this in. We're going to go and do this. And... Not ready to do that yet. I'm not ready to play that yet. Um, okay. That goes on top. We can actually siphon in response to them trying to do something. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. All right. All right. Well, after a little bit of crazy misplays, um, back and forth, us being able to hit Atasha's hideous laughter definitely won us that game. And wow. So I don't, I don't know what to think about this yet. So we're just going to, we're just going to keep calm. We're going to go into the next game. All right. Game two. We hydrate while we wait for our opponent. And then I remind you how important it is to hydrate. Sometimes it's very easy to forget that you need to be hydrating. So. Opponent goes first. Hmm. No. Don't know. We're going to keep. We're going to go to 16 on turn one. Um, hmm. Maybe we don't go. All right. Maybe we go to 16 on turn two. So. I mean. They can get it back with the Acolyte, but we're going to make them do it, right? We don't actually care about being at 16, I guess, against their deck. Their deck's a pretty slow deck. But which one do we want to cast here? Well, I guess we only have one option, right? Because of our mana. Um, okay, so this is actually pretty interesting. Um, I think we are just going to take the... We take the Trium. Take the Trium. Play the Trium. Um, yep. You have definitely... Brazen Borrowered, my friend. I mean, this is a pretty good, uh, pretty fast clock here. Imagining they're just going to play this, get back the Treacherous Blessing, or maybe something better that they potentially mill. Uh, yep. See what we could have hit if we would have wait. Oh, oh, okay. So, so this let me remember. Let me sacrifice another enchantment. Okay. Interesting. So I don't think we get the cube, right? The cube dies to their we're just gonna we're just gonna get the the land that counts for counts for two, and we are going to I guess go ahead and Yehenny's expertise into a siphon. And I mean this this is gonna force them to to take action. Right, this is gonna get them to play their Chupacabra, which is fine. And then we can potentially hostage take her their Chupacabra. A lot of back and forth here. Yep, yep, okay. Uh definitely an interesting turn of events. Well, it's not a it's not like really interesting, but take a peek. We are
This is pretty bad. You know what? Let's just play Gonti. Oh. Beautiful. I will take a Mythos. Yep. As predicted. As predicted. So we get to return stuff. Let's make some big fights. And yeah. I think next turn we're going to cast this Mythos because we actually have the mana to do so. This is a... Uh, oh. Oh, no. Hmm. This might be bad. I can sack each other. So we get creatures. Well, shoot. Um, no! Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing, my friend? Why are you conceding? Uh, maybe because they, they didn't like the fact that we paused a little bit. Very understandable. Sometimes it happens. But I don't understand why you conceded there, Evan. Um, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll tell us down in the comments. But you were definitely about to get something pretty hefty there as a 5-drop. Right, this gets a five drop. Yep, maybe two five drops you get. Might not have been able to win there. So, all right, well, good game, good game. On to the next one. We're never what what really drives me crazy about concessions like that is we're never gonna know what could have happened, right? Because our opponent definitely had the option to grab a couple of big creatures out of their deck, and we're just not gonna know. We're just not going to know what those creatures would have been. So. Could our deck have had answered whatever they were going to do? Do we keep? I think we, I think we do. Not the best hand, but we do get to shock in a Valky. All right, what are you playing over there, opponent? Black, blue... I blew nothing. Elfo Mastery. Blows. Finding the old gods. Whatever the heck that is. I mean we're gonna we're just gonna start milling, right? Oh, okay. You're playing shrines. Okay, so we get to draw a card. I like it. Gimme, gimme. So, hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna play it. I mean, we just have to force our opponent to use either the Binding or the other Baleful Mastery. I mean, they can pay four for the Baleful Mastery, save the Binding for something better. Yep. You don't want to click on Valky instead? Don't you? After Valky. We're gonna play. We're gonna play Xanathar. Hope we draw land and then play Nicol Bolas. Okay, that definitely changes a lot of things. We.
Will it live? Highly unlikely. Oh. That is a panic cycle. Holy moly. Uh, we're shocking. They don't care about this. Okay. I just want to play all their cards this way. I feel like that was right. Oh no, never mind. This is the top. I got very confused. Because we could have already played that with the Xanathar. Right, Doomscar. Yep, Doomscar is a pretty good one. Ping ping. Let's see what we get. I'll, I'll take it. Take it. We are the Honden Shrine deck. Oh, thank you, Nicobolus. All right, going into the next game. This deck is performing well. Again, I love playing our opponent's cards. If this is an aggressive deck, probably fare pretty well. Um, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it. Oh, interesting. Oh, mill deck. Okay. We're probably going to get milled. I'd really love to draw land. You are not a land. They're going to go crab land, mill us for a million. We wouldn't have drawn a land anyway, so that's probably fine. Bottom. There's an off chance that they drew another one. Nope. Nope, nope. All right, wishing well. Do a little scrying. Bolt to the top, but that's scary. But, you know what's good about that? this all right so um which one do we take you'll never know all right well i really wanted to uh draw land there So let me read that again. As long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost. Okay. Well, spell. All right. All right. All right. We don't want to just run this out. I do wish we had a... Is that a sorcery? That's an instant. All right, so we are gonna tr we are gonna transform. How much does this cost? Three. As well, doesn't really do much, but. It does actually bring the cost down of our siphon one mana, which is kind of cool. There's a tiny bit of synergy. All right, so let me let me read this. Right, we go and do this. Okay. Good 
Sure thing. Right, so we get to just do this for evensies. We get to just re relive the dream. And and I already know a lot of people are just like, why did you why are you playing Valky when you could just play Tabalt? You know what? I'd rather play Nicobolus on seven a hundred percent of the time. Okay, you're gonna know us for three. Not really phased by that. You're gonna go get land. And oh, us drawing land. Pretty pretty sick. But I really don't wanna keep getting milled. So We are going to... Let me read this again. Probably never going to level that up. What we're probably going to do... I think it's going to try to hit a land here. We did. Ah. Huh. Ho, 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 ho. We're going a whole different way. We're going a whole different way here. All right. You know what I need? I need a hostage taker. Ah, uh, that, that works perfectly as well. Make some horsies. Opponent is definitely going to go all in on this midnight clock. We're going to probably just kill it during our upkeep. I mean, how how upset would you be, right? How how upset, right? That's probably that's probably a shame a shame scoop or a concession, right? Go. Yeah. Ooh. We are the the aura the aura deck now. Nicobolus, thanks again for overseeing that game. You did all the work. All the work. Nicobolus, deck supervisor. All right, well. We did just queue into a draw, so I had to edit that out. You guys have seen it before in one of my videos, and you've probably experienced it yourself. Really no fun. Got quite the quite the curve, right? One four six. One four six. This is not a good hand. But we only have one Xanathar in our deck, so we're gonna keep. All right, what's our opponent plan? Well, 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 well. Yep, you can have Valky. Taking any of our creatures here does not actually do anything for you, so. Obviously, if you can flip it with Thanathar, you win the game. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen, my friend. Let's go. 
Probably take Gonti. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's the pick. That's the worst of the th Now we actually have That would have been horrible for them to hit. Now we actually have a target for probably cry of the granarium. I don't think Okay. That works. That works really well. Opponent will never suspect the Thief of Sanity, so they're probably just gonna extinction event. Go oddsies. They have to, right? Oh, they're gonna transform thinking that they get to steal the Thief, and then it's not gonna happen is this really going to happen? Then it's not going to happen, and then they're going to shame scoop. Uh, no blocks. You just have a removal spell in your hand? Yeah, it, do it doesn't work this way. Sure. Thanks. And I think what we do is we pay some life for absolutely no reason other than me being an idiot. And I really want to thought seize them, right? I really want this. Hmm. Oh. Oh. This could actually be a really funny game if we're able to take one of their offerings because they're going to try to they're going to try to give us that they're going to try to give us that yep if you say even that's bad for you yeah. all right I am going to go ahead and take this extinction event. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to get them to... I mean, they know every single one of the cards in our hand. I just got to get them to use their room, right? This has to happen. They should be sweltering suns and not actually casting the blood, blood chief's thirst like they're hovering like they're going to. Would have been very confused had they done. Yep, we're gonna try to get more value out of out of Gonti. Like I said, we're gonna try to cast some offerings. I feel like we've seen more of our opponent's deck than they have. There it is. Definitely taking a Grim Tutor, 100%. But he'll draw two here, I'm sure. Oh. Okay. I would have drawn two there. The rest, yeah, you got nothing.
So, I mean, we we definitely win the game, right? Like, they're 100% not expecting us to about to cast this Unmored Ego. Right? <laughs> and, 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 and they're not going to expect us to name a harmless offering. Oh, man. Do it to it. Yep. Demonic Pact. <laughs> oh, that's a win right there. That's a win for the books. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Just got to shuffle them back up and hit the next game. Let's go. Oh, that's just... That's just one of the all-time, I think, great wins. Even though, you know, you know, they conceded after after us taking their harmless offerings. It's still great knowing that we essentially just countered their entire plan just by playing that one card. And I mean, they they should. And there's a huge argument they should have drawn two cards there instead of making us discard first because they knew what was in our hand and or they knew three of the four cards that were in our hand. I think at the time and knowing that we could have discarded at least two of those not good cards kind of white control deck are we about to be playing mill are they already playing mill today okay you scry what are you doing what are you doing over there two to the top no 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 no, no, no. What you got? What you got? Nine lives? <laughs> oh, we won't even count that one. We won't even count this one. Oh, man. That's crazy. All right. Next one. All right. Let's go. We're not even, we're not even to count that game. I will still... We'll show it, guys. My opponent's on first. I don't have a turn one. Right, we're gonna keep. We'll play this unless we draw a. Okay. Let's say unless unless we draw a thought seize, we play the drowned catacomb. What is that? What is that card, my friend? What is that? Let's just do this now while they're tapped out. Heliod's in her. Hmm. Part of me is going to gonna regret taking this land, I feel like. Because I, I don't know what this foretell, this foretold card is. That's fine. That's fine. Hmm. What could we name? Might give us a little insight on what we can name. Rune Halo. Sarah's Ascendant? That might be a good one. Shadow Spear kind of sucks because now the speaker has grown out of the range. So I think now what we have to do we could extinction event that I think I think we have to. All right, let's say odd. Even though this could be hitting Heliod also.
All right, we're going to keep this Ashiok up for right now. Okay. Will give us a, a blocker for Heliod when it turns on next turn. Cosmos. What do I take here? This might be wrong. That might be wrong. I really wish we had a red mana right now for this. I told you I was going to regret not taking that Heliod's intervention. 100%. No? Yeah, I think we wait. Let's see what happens. Attack. This might be a game where we actually get to uh be nice. Must be nice. We definitely have to kill one of those. There's also another argument for having to go searching for another and the good news is I guess we can just name Heliod, right? Heliod Sun Crown. Still not attacking. Okay. Okay. All right. Your deck is just all over the place, my friend. Oh. Ow. That was probably easily the best draw on our deck. Easily. Easily the best draw on our deck. Now is the time to strike. This game is getting interesting, right? They only need. Please don't be a, a two mana white spell. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, Basri was about to activate, and then I think the game ends when Basri activates. Holy moly. Top deck hostage taker. You know, Nicol Bolas was in our deck. Shuffling it up to the top. So, thanks again, Nicol Bolas. All right, well, we are actually going to final boss battle now. We've already technically played seven opponents, I know. But we're we're seven and zero, oh, and we had a one, you know, quick quick minute long game. So we're gonna we got a bonus, we got some bonus content. Don't like it, but we're keeping it. When it's on the mulligan. Just go ahead and start off with the uh, Drown Catacomb. We do get to Thought Seize next turn. Not the land we wanted to see. But let's take a peek. Oh, okay. So. We're just going to take away that, that business. And we are going to Thought Seize away this Questing Beast because we have to. Please don't have two. And we're going to hope they draw land. Please draw land. Oh. Are you kidding me? I can't believe they drew. And I really thought about just firing that off too. No, well, it's a decent These two go good together. Yep. Took all the damage. So... Mutates for four. Ask for four, it's a bigger creature. Either way, it's, it's... Wish I could just... Oh, we can't, and we can't even mutate because you can't, you, you can only mutate onto your own cards, right? So I'm glad I actually realized this before we did it. So. So yeah, mutate. You only get to mutate onto cards you own. We're playing the Great Horn because it blocks a questing beat. For sure. Looking for the I'm looking for the big boys. Attacks. No attacks. I can hit with this thief. I, th I think we I think we might be able to win. We can hit with the thief. <laughs> Could be wrong. Actually forgot to look to see where they put that card. See anything with reach right now. Big old trampler. We shall play a big old creature. That's unfortunate. Guess we drew them right into that. Take a look. I mean, we're getting a lot of great creatures from them. 
not gonna attack. We definitely need to raid six sixes. I'm actually gonna take the land. No attacks. Okay, well we're draw we're we're putting them into into all of their land. It's gonna be this is risky to actually play this untapped, so I wonder if they're thinking, oh, why isn't he mutating? Well, we can't. Okay. I don't actually think this does anything for us. Take this. Shall do it again. Better. Okay. And again, just to let you guys know, mutate. It says put it under or over target non-human creature you own. And we don't own um I mean I guess yes, we could we could mutate onto one of these, but and now at this point I'm I'm a little upset that I haven't been doing that, but Let's see if this actually works. This is not how this works, though. You're not supposed to be able to do this per the per the rules of mutating. We're going to have to look into this. Because again, If you cast this spell for its mutate cost, put it under or over target non-human creature you own. I do not own Auspicious Starix. I own Thief of Sanity. Our opponent, Ferret Hater, which is a funny name that I just realized that their name is, is actually the owner of all of these green cards. So therefore, I could not mutate onto these. As it says, look at the top, Owner, Ferret Hater, Controller, Matumbo. So I should not be able to mutate onto an Auspicious Starix because our opponent owns this card. And as it says here, put it under or over target non-human creature you own. So definitely a bug. Um, I'm going to have to report this. Um, I, I guess we should have been able to mutate onto our other creatures, which... We probably should have been doing but at the same time i'm glad we didn't because we just lose a ton of value so uh yeah so i'm definitely gonna report that this is a cool kind of final boss battle got to see what they do and then we'll this should draw a lot of interaction in the chat of how bad of a player i am so um yeah so again i was my my play was based off of the wording of mutate so all right so let's, uh, let's talk about this in the wrap-up. All right, welcome to the wrap-up, and we crushed it with this deck. Um, I did not expect this at all. Um, I, I did expect a very high win rate just based on how we've been performing with the blue-black version, but then adding the red, I did figure out we might have a little bit of growing pains, and there was some growing pains in that first game that we played against Mill, but we actually managed to, um, you know, 
eight and zero. Oh, but then, you know, we had one match where um, our opponent just conceded immediately, like after we, um, after we hit the top of their deck really quick. Then we had an opponent concede, um, you know, for really no reason. So, um, you know, who knows what would happen at the end of those games. And then we did actually queue into a draw because, you know, Wizards can't get their, their software fixed. So, I mean, in reality, we had, we went 8-0-1. So no losses, which is, which is amazing. Um, this deck's a lot of fun. Um, I do think the weaker cards in the deck, uh, at least while we were playing, at least this go-round, um, would have been the Legion's Ends and the Ashioks. So I didn't feel like they got to really get highlighted as much as they typically do or they have been for me lately. Um, well, Ashiok, I don't know because I, I just added Ashiok to this, but at least the Legion's Ends, they didn't really come into play that often. Um, and the Ashiok, it was it was all right, but it really didn't, uh, we didn't hit any graveyard decks um, that we really cared about. It did do work. Ashiok did do work. It did remove a bunch of cards. Um, it did. I, I, I do believe it took a little bit of heat in a couple games, if maybe. Or I, I you know, who I can't remember. Go back and watch. But um, yeah, all the other cards are great. Nickel Bolas is awesome. Xanathar is awesome. You find some prisoners. I thought was great addition. It did work. It killed. It actually killed artifacts that we cared about killing, and it matched in its utility to Siphon Insight to allow us to hit some land sometimes when we were actually land short. So really, really, really cool. And again, you know, Thoughtseize, big MVP, um, always. It's a very, very, very powerful card, um, allowing us to hit some removal spells so we can actually land Valky or Thief of Sanity. So uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this deck. We're going to keep playing this probably on... Uh, on ladder see how see how well we do at the end of this month but uh, i really hope that you all enjoy this deck i i couldn't remember if there were some other cards i know there's like a four mana spell that cost it's four mana it's all hybrid blue black and it lets you pull a card out of their hand and then you can cast it but um that's a card i really want to play so bad but it's just not good in the fact that you, i think you have to play it and then you have to cast it that following turn you don't get to just cast it for free as soon as it as soon as you take it from um there's a potential where you're just for four mana you're doing that and then you know defenses are are wide open and your opponent's just able to do whatever they want to get back at you for doing that so probably why the card was designed that way um but overall again i love the deck um i love the aspect of playing your opponent's cards because they you, you always plan for you know what everybody um the meta and, and what everybody else is playing but uh, sometimes you just don't really think about playing yourself. Sometimes you play yourself. But yeah, I hope you guys, like I said, enjoy the deck. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Check out all those links down below. Join the Discord. Uh, anything you can do would be awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, again, thanks everybody in advance, um, especially to Valky and Nicol Bolas. But yeah, thanks again. Please, everybody, stay safe. We will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.